Hi there, this is Rishabh and I welcome you to the Python Word series. We are at video number 22 and in this video we are going to talk about errors and error handling. Well, if we have to do any kind of error handling, it's very important that we understand what kind of errors can occur. So like only once we understand that these are the errors which can occur, uh, it becomes easier for us to handle those errors. <clears throat> so yeah let's look at what are the most common errors in python now i have curated some examples just to showcase uh like how exactly some of the errors can occur like uh, here is the first example so this is one of the most common error that is the syntax error so this error occurs when the code violates the rules of the python syntax and here we have given an example so what i'm doing is that instead of using a comparison operator I'm using the assignment operator and when I try to print this this throws a syntax error now let us just do this quick experiment now we say error 1 let me say def error 1 and we say that if let me just copy x is equal to let's say 1 print x even though my editor is saying this is wrong but just for the sake of experiment let's just give it a trial now let me just call error 1 yep so python errors.py <clears throat> so this is how the syntax error looks like invalid syntax maybe you meant this or this instead of this so as you can see that uh, my code basically crashes after this like even if there was any statement after this let's say this is correct let's see what happens now if you see uh, whenever some error occurs uh, in the code well the code basically crashes and we are never going to reach this line number 10 so I really want you to note this point because I'll be coming back to this point when we talk about error handling. So now I don't think we really need to look at uh, examples of all of these error types. But yeah, it's important to have uh, an idea in mind that this is how errors can occur in Python. So one of the errors is uh, indentation error. This error occurs when the code indentation is incorrect. So here is an example. We are using a four control structure. So we are saying for i in range 10, uh, we are not giving the four spaces which are required, uh, which is the indentation which is required in Python whenever we are starting a new block of code inside of a control structure. So that's why this error is thrown, that is this indentation error is thrown. Similarly, we have the name error and this error occurs when a name or variable is not defined. So I have simply written print a. Now this type of an error, I think we can try in the interpreter as well so what happens if i simply say print a <clears throat> it says name error name a is not defined as expected so uh, like why i am trying to show you all these error types so that you can keep these in your mind and whenever you see such an error uh, occurring in the real world scenario or in your project you can actually relate that okay this error could be occurring because of so and so reason and then similarly we have the type error and this error occurs when an operation or function is applied to an object of inappropriate type so here we are saying print 5 plus 10 now 5 is a uh, numeric type which is an integer whereas 10 is a string now let's just give it a try print 5 plus let's say 10 what happens so we are getting this type error unsupported operand types for plus which is int and string cool then we have value error this error occurs when an operation or function receives an argument of inappropriate value so here the int function is taking hello which is a string which cannot be converted to a numeric type now let me show you two examples one correct and the other incorrect so one is this example here this is convertible to a numeric type and now let's look at something which is not convertible to the numeric type so here we get a value error 
uh, and it says that invalid literal for int with base 10 hello because hello is not a valid literal for any int value with base 10 then we have index error and you might have guessed already that this error occurs when you try to access an index that is out of range so like uh, this list because the python indexing is zero based so this is index number zero this is index number one this is index number two and index number three does not exist but what we are trying to do is we are trying to print my list three so of course it's going to give us an index out of range error key error occurs when we try to access a key in the dictionary which does not exist so here we have my dict where a has a value of 1, key b has a value of 2, key c has a value of 3. Now if I try to say print my dict d, then it's going to give me a key error. Then we have the attribute error. This error occurs when you try to access an attribute or method that does not exist. So my list or list in general in python has no method add. If you remember the list video, uh, we had extend, we had append, but there is no add method. So that's why if I try to call a method which does not exist on a certain uh, kind of an object, then this error is going to be thrown. That is the attribute error. The zero division error, well, the most common one, this error occurs when you try to divide by zero. So whenever we try to divide any value by zero, this error is thrown. Then we have an IO error. Uh, this error occurs when an input output operation fails such as trying to read from a file that does not exist now this error is very very common because a lot of times uh, we end up giving a wrong path and uh, so the interpreter always complains that this is an IO error because it is not able to find the file which we are trying to give the path for so it's it's really good to keep in memory all these different errors because they, they really help you to understand where your code is exactly failing and they are very good for debugging purposes like if you understand that okay this could be the possible cause of this error then it becomes very easy to debug that specific script cool now let's talk about how we can handle these errors now uh, like before we actually talk about handling these errors the first question is why error handling is needed in the first place like why do we need to handle the errors so now is the time that i would like to go back to what i discussed in the beginning of the video so as you can see that whenever this error occurs so this error occurred at line number nine because on the line number nine we had a call to this function and inside of this function this error occurred now the problem is that as soon as this error occurs all the code which is written after this line does not execute why because my script crashes the code crashes on this error itself now uh, these kinds of crashes we really don't want in production uh, so let's say we have an application which is being accessed by millions of users and if because of one error my application is crashing then it can lead to the unavailability of the application. It can actually impact the availability of the application. So in order to avoid such situations, it's very important to handle the errors in a very graceful manner so that even if an error is occurring, we are properly logging it somewhere so that it can be monitored by uh, the responsible team. And uh, we are able to mitigate the risk. That is, we are not uh, like crashing the whole application because of a single error so always ensure that wherever you are writing a code which has the potential to throw an error always try to cover it uh, or always try to encapsulate it inside of a try except clause now this is how this is the syntax of how we can handle the errors in python so we have to write a try so uh, you can think of it as yet another control structure so you have to write try and then you have to write the block of code which is vulnerable to throw an error and then accept you have to give the exception name and then the code to gracefully handle the error okay so using the syntax now let's look at an example of how exactly we can handle the errors in python so let's take an example from here itself 
so like here is a zero division error example we can take or let's take this example because this is a very common error the key error so this error occurs when you try to access a key that does not exist in a dictionary so let's just go ahead and take this example only so let me just copy it and let me remove the code which we wrote before and paste this one so uh, yeah let me just save it now what happens if I do python errors.py so it says key error d because d is not a proper key now let's try to handle this error we'll say try print my dict and then pass in the key which does not exist except key error as err so err is just an alias to this error and i'm saying that print that key is not valid let's save it now let's try to execute this now we can see that it says that that key is not valid now let us just try to do one more thing let me actually first let me again comment this so let's just again okay let's just copy paste this okay so i'm generating the error once again cool so now the key error is occurring now let's say there was a statement after this uh will the code okay will this be executed we are asking a question will this be executed let's see what happens as you can see that the code throws the error uh, at this line itself when we are trying to print uh, the value for a key which does not exist and we are never reaching line number 12 uh, that is print will this be executed now let's try let me just remove this and let me just uncomment this again which means we are now using the code where the error is handled gracefully so let me just save it and try to execute now you can see that even though the error occurred even though it was handled uh, but at the end will this be executed was actually executed meaning that your script won't crash instead uh, the program will simply handle the error will do whatever needs to be done and then it will continue with its proper execution so this is the idea behind handling errors gracefully that even if an error is occurring which is quite common in a lot of scenarios for example wherein we have to let's say you are taking the name of the file uh, as an input from the user and then you're trying to read that file for them so there is a possibility that that file doesn't exist so the error can occur but you really don't want uh, like any kind of input to crash your program which is basically a denial of service attack kind of a thing so you don't want that to happen so always 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 handle the errors gracefully wherever you see a potential uh, for an error to be thrown <clears throat> it's better to handle that error in such a fashion so we can say try accept this is error okay now there is one more thing so all these errors like the key error the value error the syntax error so they are all uh, having a parent class called as exception when you are not aware of course this is not a good practice you should be aware that what kind of exception can be thrown but if you are not aware that what is the kind of exception which will be thrown then you can always use this uh, like this exception that is a parent class and it can basically capture the error for you so now if I try to run this again you can see that the output remains the same the only problem is that in such a scenario it may be very difficult for you to tell uh, for a scenario where multiple errors can occur that which exception actually occurred and debugging may become slightly difficult so it's better that you understand well that what are the different kinds of errors which can be thrown and then act accordingly okay so now there is one more thing which I wanted to talk about before wrapping up this video well what you can do is you can actually catch multiple exceptions with the multiple except uh, clauses so I can simply write exception name here and then I can write the code to gracefully handle the error 
So like uh, if you see that there is a code uh, in which uh, let's say uh, one of the errors which can be thrown is let's say zero division error and the other error which can be thrown is let's say attribute error. So what you can do is you can handle both of them. You can handle three errors also. So it, uh, like this number uh, is not limited. So you can keep on catching multiple errors also. Yep, so this is it about error handling in Python. I hope you found this video to be valuable. Uh, I hope you got some insights out of this video. And uh, uh, that's it from my side. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye and take care.